Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. We've been on that grind for Vanguard, right? I've been going through, I've been ranking up every single weapon in the game, getting it ready for the Warzone integration. And of course, that means I've had my fair share of time with pretty much every gun in the game at this point, including the SMGs, which I'm not gonna lie, I am absolutely loving here in Vanguard. And today I wanted to go through and break down the best class setup for every single SMG in the game right now. Go over what I think you guys should be using, what I think works the best for overall gameplay. So as we go through it all, if you enjoy the video at any point, or if you find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it, it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new here, or if you have not already subscribed, feel free to do so. That way you can always guarantee you are up to date with everything going on in Call of Duty between news, updates, class setups, tips. It is all right here each and every single day. Also real quick, let's check out today's sponsor. Hey everyone, just wanted to let you know that today's video is sponsored by World War III. It's an awesome tactical online FPS where you fight in real cities around the world, featuring a huge arsenal of weapons, vehicles, and other equipment to get your hands on. The closed beta test is now available on PC, and by picking up a closed beta pack with the World War III link in the description below, you can guarantee your access, along with some in-game rewards like character and weapon blueprints, vehicles, and even more. Also, if you purchased the game at all in the past, your access for the closed beta is already confirmed, so you don't have to worry about missing your chance to play. With all the recent development updates, World War III has more to explore than ever before. From team-based PvP to a massive arsenal and a huge variety of maps and ways to fight in them. So, if you want to get into the action right away, check out the link down in the description below to get your hands on a World War III closed beta pack today. Once again, thank you to World War III for sponsoring today's video, and now, back to it. All right, so sort of like what we did with the rifles, I also want to go in order of what I think is the worst to best in terms of what uh, I would rank the SMGs as. So first up here, we've got the Sten. It's an all right sub, but it just doesn't always compete with some of the other options we have in the game. Things like the Type 100, the Thompson, so on and so forth. Those are really good SMGs, and the Sten, while it's all right, definitely not a bad weapon by any means, is just not the best of the best in this case, but it's still pretty fun to use. Obviously, this is sort of an iconic weapon when it comes to Call of Duty in general, and pretty well balanced as well. Like, it's got decent range, decent mobility all around. It's not too shabby. Starting up first here with the muzzle, for SMGs, it really depends on the exact uh, weapon we're talking about, but there's a few different routes you could go here. In some cases, using the F8 stabilizer is pretty solid because you get better accuracy, which is huge, and also better damage range. So some of those more versatile SMGs that have good range as is, that's definitely a solid option. You could also just go ahead and straight up use the rifle break, which is pretty ideal, help out with that accuracy, which the SMGs do need uh, some help with in general. Or you could even go for the recoil booster. Now you do lose some accuracy there, but you can gain that back with other attachments. And that increased fire rate is actually pretty beneficial in quite a few different cases. The Sten, for instance, does not have the best fire rate in the world. So adding on this, I honestly feel like it's a pretty solid choice. Uh, if you're okay with the fire rate though, I'd probably go for the rifle break in this case, but I like to use the recoil booster. When it comes to the barrel here, we're focusing on speed, aggression, but also versatility. We don't want to limit this in too many ways. A hip fire barrel in this case is not going to do all that good. An ADS speed barrel also not going to do all that good when you end up losing control, accuracy, range, and velocity. Those are like the worst things you could lose on a weapon. Bursting with this gun is your worst. It's the worst possible idea. You have to do a challenge with this barrel and I hated it. It was not fun at all. Uh, highly accurate and controllable, increased headshot damage, better range, but you reduce your body shot damage, which is not ideal because you're not going to only be landing headshots or you get a fire rate barrel in this case too. So all these barrels for what it's worth are not great. If you had to choose, it's probably either between the headshot damage increasing and the range increasing one or the fire rate barrel. And in my opinion, while you do lose that body shot damage, this is going to be the best in terms of overall efficiency. Now, as far as the optic goes, I'm always using the slight reflector, especially on SMGs. This is perfect for close range fights, so that's a no-brainer there. You'll see that pretty much copy and pasted on every sub today. For the stock, we definitely got to gain some things back here, right? Because we are losing some mobility and whatnot with that barrel. So honestly, just using the para stock here, better sprint to fire, better movement speed is pretty ideal. These other ones are built more for like a more versatile setup and a more range-based setup. The folding stock's not a bad option for what it's worth. Better hit fire accuracy, ADS speed, and sprint to fire, but you're losing even more accuracy, which is not super ideal. Uh, whereas this is just that initial accuracy. And like I said, that stuff we can gain back over the course of time. We're definitely going for the uh, hand stop grip here. We want the better accuracy and the better control back. Those are two huge things 
you want to focus on, especially the accuracy, because obviously we've lost some of that so far. As far as the magazine goes, here's where I'm a bit torn, because you can definitely try and make this semi-decent and go for the uh, 45 ACP 20 round fast mags, because they increase the damage a little bit, which is ideal, but you also get to suffer that accuracy decrease yet again, alongside worse fire rate, worse movement speed, so you're sort of working against yourself, and also 20 round fast mags go by very quickly, even with the slow fire rate. For me personally, I like the 50 round drums. It's pretty much just the basic extended mag, and it works quite well. Uh, I go for lengthened here, as always, for the, uh, the ammo type upgrade there. For the rear grip, we're going for polymer, better flinch resistance, which is not too big of a deal, but we are mainly focused on that better accuracy and control during fire. Uh, for the proficiency here, you got a couple of options. I like steady quite a bit for the reduced movement penalties. However, gung ho is not all that bad for a sub, slide of hand is not all that bad either, and frenzy is also super, super ideal. My main choices here are between frenzy and steady. Either of those work great. I'm gonna go for steady in this case, but frenzy would definitely be my second choice. And then I also go for quick in this case, two better sprint speed, focusing on mobility even more there. Pretty solid all around setup for a very mid tier SMG. Now following this then I've got the PPSH. Now, to be honest, this is a pretty good SMG. It just doesn't compete just like the Sten does with some of these other subs, which are just so, so good as they stand right now. So the PPSH is good. It just does have some drawbacks that are uh, make it a little bit less ideal than some of the other choices we have, particularly when it comes to aiming down sights. This is just not a good ADS weapon but surprisingly, it can be ridiculously good if you build this for hip fire, which is exactly what we're doing. I never do this for any weapon, but I was bored when I was leveling this up and I went after it and I tried it out and it made the weapon insanely, insanely good. So what we're really focused on here is that hip fire accuracy. So obviously where the F8 stabilizer would work in some cases, it's hurting us there. So we don't really want to use that too much. Instead, I'm just going for the basic rifle break here. You are going to ADS from time to time, and it's not going to be as good as it was if you were building four ADS, but that's not how you want to build the PPSH. So we're just going for the rifle break in this case for the barrel. We're going for the second one, the 230 millimeter BO3P barrel, because this gives us better hip fire accuracy, recoil recovery, better fire rate, like all around. It is insanely good for this hip fire build. The other barrels here, like the Zach barrel, shout out me, right? <laughs> uh, it's good for like a more versatile build. And if you wanted to build this for ADS, that's the one I would recommend. But like I said, this weapon just doesn't seem to thrive in that situation. It's, it's much better as that hip fire build. So we're going for that second barrel here. Uh, for the optic, again, slight reflector, even though we're not really ADSing all that much with this. For the stock, again, we're focusing on the, the movement and the hip fire here. So you can either go skeletal and just get that better sprint to fire and better movement right off the rip, or you could go for something like the remove stock, which is better hip fire accuracy, better sprint to fire, and better movement, which is really touching on all three of those major keys. Obviously, though, you're really building this to not be good for ADSing, so you got to keep that in mind. For the under barrel here, again, we want to keep our strengths in mind here. Having something like the Smile Pistol Grip, better hip fire accuracy, and better sprint to fire is insanely, insanely beneficial. For the magazine, 110%, you don't want to be using this first 71 round drum. You want this large magazine, 110%, because that's going to be great for spraying and praying and hip firing for days, because obviously you're going to miss some more shots when you're hip firing, so you got to have that larger mag to ensure you can clean up kills. But this first one is not it. It's just not going to help out. Minus one damage, minus one range and velocity, not ideal. You want to go for the second one, it's just your basic extended mags, and it works great for what we need it for here. Again, I'm going for lengthened. It can help out in some of like those medium range fights where you are, if you are still hip firing, it uh, that extra bullet velocity is something that's going to be a lot more noticeable there. For the rear grip, here there's really not many that help out with hip fire accuracy if you go through and look at the uh the pros for these you're really not gaining all that much so something like the polymer will work just fine here better accuracy during sustained fire is pretty much the uh the ideal way to go about that there for the proficiency here there really aren't a ton of great options steady again is one that i really like because the reduced movement penalties but outside of that a lot of these are not great fleet could work with that better movement speed but uh steady or fleet really the only good choices in this case and then for the kit once more we are going for quick for that better sprint speed then we get into the very competitive smgs pretty much everything from here on out is neck and neck in terms of what is the best and what is second best third best fourth best right so here we've got the owen gun this thing is a powerhouse of an smg slower fire rate so it's not the most versatile and aggressive smg in the world but man, it's TTK is good. It it just does fry when it comes down to it. It's a very, very fun weapon to use. For the muzzle here, again, I'm going to go for the recoil booster to help increase that fire rate a little bit, which, as I mentioned, was not the best in terms of overall competitiveness. So we've got that going on there. 
So the barrel in this case, it's a pretty easy choice. We're not really going for fire rate and hip fire accuracy there because of the cons that that barrel offers. Our first barrel here, the shrouded barrel, less damage fall off at long range, better bullet velocity, increased limb damage. You do have no headshot damage bonus though, which is slightly unfortunate, but luckily enough, this thing has a good enough damage uh, output as is that no bonus there is still better than some of the other weapons in the game. When you look at this last barrel, reduced body damage where you're landing most of your shots is not ideal. So I go for the shrouded in this case. Once more, we're going for the reflector sights. For our stock here, not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of most of these options. You're losing control on the Ravenwood. For the folding stock, you're losing ADS and movement speed, which is not great for a sub. For a move stock, losing accuracy and control. For the padded stock, losing movement speed. For the other folding stock, worse flinch resistance, worse accuracy during sustained fire. I do think it's between the remove stock and the folding stock here though when it comes down to it. And I personally believe that the folding stock cons are a little bit less severe when you're still getting a better sprint to fire and a better ADS, sort of similar to the remove stock here. So I'm going for the folding. Uh, as far as the under barrel goes, obviously as we just saw, we do lose some accuracy and whatnot. So putting the hand stop on there yet again is gonna be ideal. For the mags in this case, you do have a couple of options. You could go for just the basic extended mag if you wanted to, which would be the nine mil 72 round drums in this case or you could go for what i think is the most optimal the eight millimeter 60 round drums because you're getting better damage better range and velocity this makes this thing that much more versatile smg which is honestly very very good for medium range fights because of how good that ttk is again going for lengthened no brainer there obviously we're using the polymer grip once more because we want that increased accuracy and recoil during sustained fire for the proficiency here you do have some better options and i think there's honestly a tough decision to make in this case steady is always great as we've sort of figured out thus far throughout the video uh brace is also pretty ideal initial accuracy and recoil a lot of the pros use this on their like cdl setups right slot of hand is always a nice added bonus but i don't think it's as important because you also have fleet so really this comes down to what you want the most out of a weapon i i don't think there's a wrong answer here between uh fleet brace and steady really comes down to what you value the most either that accuracy or the uh reduced movement penalties in this case i'm going for brace and then finally for the kit once more we have quick for that better sprint speed now coming in at the number three spot the third best smg in my opinion right now we've got the m1928 the thompson this is personally probably my favorite smg in the game i mean it's just a lot of fun to run around with you got the large magazine by default you can fly and fry it's got good control good damage gets even better as you level it up and get some better magazine options like all around this thing is very fun to use i'm a big big fan of it in this case i am going for the f8 stabilizer because this is pretty good by default it has a good fire rate you don't need to worry about the recoil booster and obviously we're getting better accuracy out of the stabilizer as is for the barrel i'm always going for the cooling barrel here highly accurate and controllable so better accuracy and control reduced scope sway is not really all that uh ideal for a smg doesn't really matter too much and it's not really applicable applicable uh but it is what it is it's there as an extra pro you can have cooling though is definitely the way to go Slate Reflector, yet again, is my choice of optic. For the stock in this case, most times I'm going for the adjustable better sprint to fire and better movement speed because obviously we can gain that accuracy back we already have with the uh, the stabilizer. However, these other options could be utilized pretty well if you were going for something that's a little bit more medium range based. Honestly, even the wire grip here is not too bad, but the cons are not the best for an aggressive SMG setup. As far as the underbarrel goes, yet again, we're going for the hand stop. This is pretty much the best underbarrel for all rifles, all SMGs, 99.9% .9 of the time. For the magazine option here, always going for the 8 mil 50 round drums. 100 is just overkill. It's going to slow you down way too much. Not great for an SMG. 50 works just fine. Better damage, better bullet velocity and range. This is what makes the Thompson so, so good and easily my favorite SMG in the game because it drops the TTK down to such a fast amount. Uh, it's going to fry and fly, as mentioned with some of these other subs, but in a much better way. Lengthening yet again for the ammo type. Polymer for the rear grip once more. For the proficiency here, again, you got a lot of good options, man. Steady is great. Fleet is great. Frenzy is also great. Just comes down to what you want more out of a weapon. If you want the increased health regen because you're constantly playing aggressive up in the enemy spawns, run Frenzy. If you want better movement, use Steady or use Fleet. There is no wrong answer once more. And then once more for the kit, we're also going for Quick for that better sprint speed. Pretty much a standard on all the SMGs that it's available on. Now, at number two, we got the most popular sub in the game, the MP40. Now, it's it's very possible that this thing's going to be nerfed. I would say it's almost guaranteed that this thing's going to be nerfed over the course of time, potentially even uh, around the time that this video goes up. Is that going to make it the worst sub in the game? Very unlikely. This thing is an icon. It is always going to be good, and it's very versatile when it comes down to it. This is a great sub for close and medium range fights. That's why a lot of the pros are using it in the CDL. It all around just has very little cons with a lot a lot of pros so uh here we're going for the recoil booster 
a lot of pros are using this as is just to help get that fire rate up a little bit more and uh, and allow them to fry a little bit quicker for the barrel here the first one here better accuracy and control just like over on the uh, on the thompson there it's just a clear choice these other ones are not great no enemy skulls is not a good pro to have when you're losing damage range better ads hip fire accuracy is not how we're building this and then the short barrel no headshot damage bonus all, it's, it's a no-brainer choice here, the first barrel every single day of the week. Slight reflector once more. For the stock in this case, most players are going to go for folding. Some players like to go for the remove stock and get that better movement speed, but folding, I think, is the most optimal. For the under barrel, obviously, we're going for the hand stop once more. For the mag in this case, you could definitely mess around. Some players like the fast mags. A lot of the pros run the fast mags for their scrims where it's only 4v4, right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. Most players, though, I think will probably opt for the 64-round drums, just that basic extended mag. I, though, really like the 8 mil 32 run mags because they're that damage increasing mag that just makes this thing absolutely as dominant as can be. So I'm going for those. Obviously, lengthen once more. 100% the polymer grip once more. For the proficiency in this case, you don't have all the great options. Uh, brace is what most of the pros are using. I'm going to go for steady in this case just because I don't feel like brace is as important as some of the movement penalties are here. Uh, then finally, once more, we're going for quick. No surprise there. And then finally, we've got the Type 100. This thing is a beast. It was even better when Vital could be paired with the 30 Russian short damage increasing rounds, uh, but now they have obviously patched that. This is still, though, like a solid three-shot kill in most cases, which is insanely, insanely good for an SMG. Like, I love this thing. In my opinion, easily the best SMG as it stands right now. Over the course of time, I'm sure it'll still uh, be good, even though it'll probably receive some nerfs as well. But really, this thing is a beast and a force to be reckoned with at the moment. Recoil booster here yet again because the fire rate is not the best in the world. For the barrel, again, I think it's a pretty easy choice here. I like this. I like this last one, honestly. Better fire rate, which again is ideal, and better damage range. You're losing some accuracy and some ADS speed, but we're going to gain that back with some other attachments. These other ones are just a little bit too weird for my liking. Again, no enemy skulls, not ideal with the uh, damage range fall off. Better ADS, but you're losing damage range of velocity and accuracy. Uh, you're losing ADS, movement speed, sprint to fire speed, where no real pros are being used there. Uh, the precision barrel would be the only other one I'd maybe consider, but you're reducing your body damage. Not ideal. Rapid's the way to go. Obviously, slight reflector yet again. I'm going for the skeletal stock in this case, sort of similar to all the other builds thus far with that better sprint to fire and better movement speed. Uh, we're definitely going for the hand stop once more. For the mag, 30 Russian short is the way to go. Better damage plus two damage is huge. Now you might look and say, what about the minus eight accuracy? Minus eight seems like it's a big number, but it really does not feel like it when it comes down to it. And if you don't feel like you're super confident with your shot while using this, drop the recoil booster and go ahead and add on the F8 stabilizer and get plus two accuracy back. It'll work pretty well. Either of those work for what it's worth, by the way. Uh, as far as the ammo type, no surprise here. Lengthen yet again, polymer grip yet again. Uh, then for the proficiencies here, you got a couple of good options. Vital is not worth it though anymore because we are using the 30 Russian shorts. So that's sort of uh, chalked off the board there. Slot of hand is ideal, but I don't think it's as good as, as fleet is in this case. I'm going for that and getting that better movement speed. Then finally, once again, we're going for quick. So obviously we have all these SMGs built to be very fast and very aggressive, but we're still keeping them good for medium range with some of the barrels. Uh, we keep them good for some of the control and some of the accuracy stats as well between certain things like the muzzles, the under barrels and whatnot. All around, very versatile, very well-rounded setups in my opinion. And that's what I would be using on every single SMG in the game. With that said, that's going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video or hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed, feel free to do so. That way you can always guarantee you are up to date with everything going on in the world of Call of Duty. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I will catch you guys later. Peace out.